This is the Anker Solex C1000 power station. It runs off Life PO4 lithium batteries. Let's see if it's any good for powering an off-grid shed like this one. <laughs> so what do you get in the box? Well, you get your warranty card and instructions. You get a power cable for the wall socket, you get a power cable for your solar panel, and you get a power cable for your car all in the pack. There are a number of other power stations that make you buy these as optional extras. These ones come with the anchor, so that's a win. You also get quite a bit of cardboard packaging, which is recyclable, a bit of plastic packaging, which is not, but not too much of it. Okay, let's have a little tour of the features of this device. We'll start with the front panel, and there is a light up here. You turn it on, and then you have to turn it on three more times to turn it off. They all do that, and it's really annoying. I wish it was just on off. They have a 12 volt socket here, so you can run a car fridge off it. That's really important. I have tested power stations that don't have that feature. I don't know why everyone uses 12 volt sockets, so it's good that it's there. You've got two USB-C and two USB-A outlets and four domestic plugs down the bottom. So you can plug plenty of stuff into this. What can you get out of it? Well, it's got 1,056 watt hours capacity and it can run at a peak load consistently of 1,800 watts. And it does have a boost of up to 2,400 watts for equipment that spikes on start. When you're buying these sort of things, make sure you get a power station that's not gonna run at full capacity all the time. You'll wanna have a little bit more juice spare in the bank, and with 1800 watts of drawdown capacity, this has some spare juice for what most people are gonna put it through. And we'll give you some examples of that in a minute, because we're gonna test it out, and hopefully we're gonna trip the safety feature. Turning it around. On the right hand side of the station, you've got a little inlet here, which allows you to plug in a backup battery or an expansion pack to this, that's gonna double your watt hours. So it'll take you up to over 2000 watt hours of capacity if you buy the backup battery with this one. And it saves you money because you use the existing charge and release controller. All you're doing is buying extra batteries. Then, on this side, you've got your inputs. So you've got a standard kettle plug that you stick into the wall. Everyone's got them. And you've got your car charger and your solar panel inlet here. And this is the button I'm hoping will make go pop later on when we break it. Oh, and um, as for the back, there's nothing here to see. Just some little wordy stuff that you don't bother reading. Interestingly, there are no vents at the back and there are no silly little outlets at the back like some of these have, so you can put it up against something in a shelf and not worry about it overheating. All the vents are on the side. Now, I was just plugging in the anchor and I found out that they'd actually sent me 100 watt solar panels. So I won't fully charge the anchor. It's the middle of winter and we've got a lot of cloud cover, but I'm keen to see what the sort of charge time that these 100 watt panels, which are pretty neat, they snap together with magnets, provide. And it's in this point of the review when the first bit of annoyance comes into play. This is the solar panel cable that you get with the anchor and it doesn't plug in to the normal PV connectors on the solar panel. So I can't use that. However, I can use the three three separate cables that you get in the kit with the solar panels to plug into the anchor. Normal PV adapter onto a small cord that doesn't reach the distance to the solar panels. And then two long individual cables that then plug into the solar panel. So there's nothing extra that you have to buy these three cables come with the solar panel, but if you're traveling, they're a bit messy and there's lots of faffing about to get it connected to the power station. I think overall, companies that produce power stations and solar panels need to make sure that there's one cable to connect the two. Now it's the middle of winter and there's some very faint sun 
coming through a 100% cloud layer and it looks like, to be honest with you, if you look south, it's about to rain. So I don't have a lot of hope for these solar panels being able to produce much charge. And believe it or not, these little panels, they're producing 13 watts of charging power. They're only 100 watt panels. So they're, they're actually operating at more than 10% power under full cloud cover. And as the sun's just breaking through a little bit, it's slowly going up. 14 watts, 13 watts. Let's get them a little bit straighter, see if I can get this going a little bit more. We're up to 16 watts, that's kind of almost facing the sun now. 19 watts, and we're getting a little bit of glorious winter sun just poking its way through the clouds a little bit here. And we're up to 20 watts of charging power off the one solar panel. It's only a 100 watt panel and it's late afternoon, that's not bad. One of the first things I've noticed about this little Anker Solex is that it seems really light. So I've got a set of scales here. We'll chuck them on and it's about 13 kilos. So if you're traveling, this is light enough not to be too much of a burden. All right, so let's start out with the basics. I've got an iPad and a laptop here that I'm both gonna charge from USB-C type cables. There we go, we're underway with those. Then I've got a little microphone and a camera battery that I'm both going to charge with USB-A type cables, you know, the big flat square ones, USB-A's. Then I've got a car fridge that I'm going to plug into the socket up here, the 12 volt socket. Um, and so far I'm only pulling 23 watts. Now remember I can pull 1800 the other good thing about this is that the digital display actually tells you how much longer the battery is going to last. There's no guessing. And with this load, depending on whether machines are switching on or off, the fridge is fluctuating it a bit. I'm averaging between 70 and 76 hours of load capacity. So it can keep going like this for 76 hours. It's not bad. But you don't come to this channel for logical, rational stuff that 90% of people would be satisfied with. So uh, in with the earplugs, on with the speed dealers, let's cut some stuff up. <laughs> Rightio, so I can cut stuff up with the battery. Let's see if I can stick it back together. So it's coping with a low setting quite well. Let's turn up the heat a bit. Cop that, young Harry. Oh yeah, baby. Turn it up. Okay, I've turned up the juice even more and I finally got it to blow at 75% load. These little weld class Inverter MIG welders are really phenomenal welders, but they still pull a lot of power. So while you can weld with this little battery here, 
you need to do it on a lower setting. It'll get you out of trouble and it'll do light steel, but it won't do heavy construction off a battery. Go figure. Unlike some people, when you put too much load on it, all you've got to do is just tickle its little overload button here, turn it back on again, and you're good to go. So weighing in at less than a bag of dog food with over a thousand watt hours of storage capacity, 1800 watts of drawdown power, the ability to run a welder under normal conditions, and the ability to charge all your devices, this is a pretty good little power station. I did manage to kill it, but I had to try really, really hard. And when I did, all I had to do was tickle its little button. Send this to someone who needs some more spark in their life or needs to be able to do some off-grid welding with some really good gear. And if you like this kind of review, don't forget, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more next week.